You're so close to the city, but yet um, you're just in another world when you cross that bridge. Being, being born and raised here, it's, it's a pretty special place. Everybody knows who you are. You know everybody that you, that you pass on the street. You know, most of the families on this river are, you know, three, four, some five generation families. A lot of them in farming. Our dad, he worked six days a week and he worked until we got home from church on Sunday. It's not just work when, it, when it's convenient or work when it's fun. There's from a very, very young age, I just learned that you don't quit until the job is done. We watch the sun come up every morning. Farming is at the heart of what we do. No, I'm still a farmer. I mean, people ask me what I do, and I, you know, I, I tell them I'm a farmer. And I have a lot of other responsibilities as well. I think it's the farm. That's where they're from, that's their DNA. They're rooted to the land, and that's who they are. It's who their parents were. They're not gonna give that up. For me, yeah, I just think farmers, you know, these people are from their earth. I'm not saying how old I am 40, on camera. Jody's 42. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the oldest. You're only 42, right? Some, yes, some let's, let's have some wine. <laughs> we're gonna talk about how old I am. On some but level, we've always down. been working together. You know, those weekends, or there's, you know, during the summer when our mom would take us out to marble and we'd clip in posts for, you know, all day and then she'd pick us up at the end of the day. We'd have a sack lunch and, you know, have a dirt clad fight or two and get back I, to work. I won that one. <laughs> From the time I was born until 18, I was, you know, on the home ranch. I also know that it was the, you know, the first acreage that my grandfather bought when he got back from, uh, back from the war. So, I mean, just the history that goes with that as well is just, you know, it, you, you feel that. Our family farmed orchards originally, uh, lots of pears and cherries, uh, but lost our land it, during the Depression. My grandfather was a teenager at the time. They actually lost the, the ground that he grew up playing in, the fields his dad farmed, and, and the house that he was likely was born in. My grandpa went, fought in World War II, came back and was able to purchase our first 10 acres here on Merritt Island, which is the home ranch. It wasn't until 1968 that he planted the first wine grapes here in the Delta, and he did so right on the other side of that barn. And uh, because there were no grapes down here, I think most people thought he was pretty nuts. <laughs> We had the offices in my grandparents' home. We had a winemaker. We had my dad who's farming, my mom who's doing the books, selling the wine, answering phones. You know, Chris and Patty and the family live right next door. Our sales meetings were on the dining room table. We really felt like one big part of the family. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was small and um, on a really small budget too. We were winemakers, but we were also mechanics and guys who cleaned tanks, and we did every single thing there was to be done. You know, the crusher broke down, we took it apart and rebuilt it. Oh, since they were small, my God. Ryan was this, he had a shovel, and the other kids had something else, but you should have seen when they came out of the field, all sweaty, red, and their parents were trying to teach their kids how to work. But I'm so grateful now for that experience because it taught me what goes into to every bottle of wine. You know, obviously our biggest setbacks have been the loss of our parents so young. And Warren, when uh, his dad died, he was just in his second year of college, I think. But he had to come back home, you know, he had to run the, run the vineyard. I give credit to, to my mom for, for letting me do it. Um, I think she, you know, she had some other people, advisors, friends say, what are you doing? You know, I was 21 years old. I just didn't feel right letting anybody else do it. I knew I wanted to do it. A little bit sooner than I expected. So it was a very easy decision when my father passed away to move home. We kind of circled the wagons. 
that it doesn't happen every day, going through their dad passing away. Easy to fold up the tent, right? Right there. And then their mom uh, stayed the course, um, battled leukemia for many, many years. Yeah, very sweet woman. Um, someone to aspire to be like. She's very hardworking, very detail-oriented, very driven. Very sweet woman. Just the perseverance there and maintaining the family business. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. Um, it doesn't happen very often at all, actually. In some regards, it hasn't changed very much at all, and that is the real core commitment to making really good wines that people can enjoy every day. We've been at that sort of mission for a long time, and it really hasn't wavered. I think it gives us a great deal of pride. Bogle Winery in 1992 was the wrong name in the wrong county with the wrong package and the wrong wine in the wrong bottle. But now, many prominent wineries look to Bogle, and the question that we always hear is, how do you do it? So all of our wines age in barrel, which is pretty unheard of for a winery our size. We started a barrel fermentation program with our Chardonnay um, that has gone great guns, and, and now we barrel stir every barrel once a month have somebody stir every barrel by hand, 20,000 barrels. That is a, a gigantic, you know, commitment. We have the support to build one of the biggest barreled wine programs in the industry. We're gonna age all our red wine in a barrel for a year, while the Chardonnay goes in the barrel for six months. You can taste the difference between a barrel-aged wine and a wine that's been uh, oak-chipped and, and micro-oxed. If the giant corporate god of finance came in and said, we need more profitability, the barrels are out the window, that'd be the beginning of the end, it'd be over. Every single vineyard block that we either source or grow is made, vented, and aged separately. We have many, many fields of each variety that we bring in, and the best way to maintain a handle on the quality is to evaluate each one separately. So what that gives us a lot of opportunity to get to know a piece of land, to judge it over time, instead of just like bringing grapes in and say, oh, those look great, and making wine and blending it. That's really small winery tactics. We're doing it on a really big scale. The grapes that we bring into our winery are uh, certified under the Certified Green Program. We're one of the few wineries that offer a bonus to our outside growers to, to get their vineyards certified. And so uh, we truly believe in it, and uh, we want all of our growers to partake in, in our uh, sustainability effort. Well, I, I'm going to be honest. Um, it, it's a challenge growing grapes, and, and it's a challenge growing grapes for Bogle. They're very, very particular, and they're not afraid to tell you if you're doing something that, that they don't uh, approve of. The Bogle name to me stands for, above all, integrity, I guess I would say. And it stands for quality, it stands for consistency, and it stands for something that you can depend on. They understand the business from the bottom up, and so. That's, that's huge. I mean, you go to the winery, it's, it's spotless. I mean, you can tell the dedication, the passion to their craft, the commitment. There's no, there's no shortcuts. It's going to be the best wine that we can possibly put in that bottle that we've worked hard for it. From the vineyard, to the crush, to the barrel aging, to selling it to them in the tasting room. The people have cared about it from field to bottle. That hasn't changed. I know that our, our parents could never have imagined where we are today. What's different about Bogle? You know, why, why would somebody pick that off the shelf instead of something next to it? My hope is that we can tell the story so that they know there's a family behind that bottle and there's a person behind that bottle. And what went into that bottle wasn't just that vintage, but 40 years of hard work and effort and dedication and love and passion. And that's very important. And personally, that's what I hope never changes. My dad taught me how to, you know, how to work hard first and foremost, and then also how to be, you know, present. Because you always got to plan ahead, plan for the future. Then you got to realize that farming is unpredictable. And, and you got to roll with the punches.